Hi everyone and thanks for joining us. My name is Bill Garrett, the Executive Director of the Hawk Mountain Council. Uh, today we're going to continue our journey in talking about how we prepare young people for life. And joining me is Tom Kaufman, a partner at uh, RKL. He's a member of our board and Eagle Scout and our incoming board president. So thanks Tom for joining us today. Sure, my pleasure. Yeah. Well, well we're talking about uh, people's lives in scouting and their careers in scouting and, and why they stay involved. So tell us about your experience as a youth in, uh, in the Boy Scouts of America. Yeah, I was, uh, I was probably eight years old or so. Uh, my father is an Eagle Scout and uh, it was something that he wanted myself and my two younger brothers to get involved in as we were growing up. So uh, we started kind of searching out some cub packs to get involved with and uh, there was no tiger cubs at that time. Uh, so we got involved in, in the Cub Scout program and um, just enjoyed getting involved. Uh, we found uh, the troop that we wanted to get involved in and, and just got uh, line box uh, was the, the pack that we got involved in, uh, 190 out of the, the line box area and just enjoyed getting the, as, as Cub Scouts, you get into a lot more of the, or things happen more in a den and a pack setting, which is uh, usually led by typically a, a parent, mother or father who kind of run those meetings and then you get together as an entire pack and just growing up through the system really enjoyed the some of the outdoor experiences that you get to do. I'm also kind of a results driven person. So it was always neat to get to earn the different badges and the, the, the pins that you got to earn through the scouting Cub Scouting program at the time. Uh, and then it, I think it's around fifth, sixth grade, you transitioned into the Boy Scout program and uh, was able to get involved in that program. And, and some of the things that just were really kind of special to me about that program was just the opportunities to get involved in being a leader, you, you come in and you're, you're part of a patrol in the, the Boy Scout program and you get the opportunity to become a patrol leader and, and kind of lead some of the who now are the younger scouts, which are all about two years old, younger than you. So you're the expert and they're the, the new scout. And uh, I think I was able to, again, being a little bit more of a results driven person, got to really focus on advancing through the ranks and was able actually to sit for my Eagle Scout Board of Review by the time I was uh, just about 14 years old and um, ended up being senior patrol leader around that time as well, which was just a little bit overwhelming at times, but just the way it worked out, I was able to have that leadership position. And again, just, just work on being a leader and having that opportunity to lead other, other youth was just a great experience. Yeah, that, that's an, a very important uh, concept in, in, the, in the scouting program. We have adults who serve as, as leaders, but really they're advisors. And our young people, like Tom described, as a senior patrol leader or patrol leader, are the ones that really make things happen. So t tell us a little bit in, in a little more detail that senior patrol leader, some of the challenge that's, challenges that you had to face with this younger group of, of scouts that you had. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, a lot of times troops have cycles where they'll have a lot of younger kids and then those kids will become older. And sometimes there's, a, there's these peaks and valleys in terms of membership, in terms of we have a lot of older kids or younger kids and it worked out that there was a little bit of a gap between my age group and some of the older youth who were you know getting to be 18 years old and cycling out of the program so i was only 13 years old so only being two to three years older than some of the younger youth but the, the challenges were planning the meetings what what were you going to do when you got together as a group um, but i had you know as with anything you're always as as fortunate as you are with the people you have around you to help you lead the rest of the of the scouts in terms of what you want to accomplish and things like that but it, obviously it's a few years ago uh, but I, I do remember just you know I'm, I'm an accountant today so organization has always been something that has been something that I've been interested in and try to do so I remember having my briefcase and really trying to kind of plan out what meetings you're going to do and how you're going to handle that and, and our troop really met year-round um, so we had kind of a constant planning of what was coming up what was going to happen and trying to keep the young scouts coming into the program engaged and you know attending the the functions that we had to get them integrated into the program getting them to advance in rank and understand how it, it's a it's a it's just more exciting when you're actually advancing through the program and, and earning those different ranks and once you get them involved getting them to scout camp keeping them involved they, they tend to stay in the program a lot longer so you're a leader as as a scout you're a leader you're a follower and and a teacher all at the same time so yep. that's that's a pretty neat story. Thanks for sharing that. Yep. Well, t tell us about your outdoor experience because when, when folks think of Boy Scouts or scouting, they think about the outdoors and fun and adventure, and that's certainly a part of what we do. But, but tell us uh, your, your, I guess, most memorable experience in the, in the outdoors. Uh, did you go to Philmont or any of the high adventure bases? So 
if, as people who know me, I'm not a real outdoor kind of person. Um, it's just not something that I do today, but scouting was something that introduced me to a lot of things that, you know, it's kind of a, I don't say once in a lifetime opportunity, but it's things that you don't do every day that really connected and you got to enjoy. Like I did, I don't hunt, but it was neat to go up to camp to shoot the, the you know, the 22 shotgun or, or the, the BBs and the bow and arrow and things like that. So those, those were neat experiences, but every year our troop actually did, uh, we did a raft trip down the, the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. And uh, that was always something I looked forward to. Again, I've, I've done whitewater rafting afterwards and I'll never do it again. It's, <laughs> it's, I think as a scout, it seemed to be a little bit more enjoyable. I don't know why, <laughs> um, but uh, we, you know, so just experiences like that. Uh, I did not get to film on, I did attend the National Jamboree, which is a neat experience where you bring scouts from all over the United States together. It had been in uh, Virginia at the time and, uh, and spent two weeks there. The, probably the most memorable experience there was having the remnants of a hurricane blow through the jamboree and uh, we got ready all day long, put our tent poles about six inches into the ground to try to make sure stuff didn't blow away and all of our tent poles snapped. Everything got soaked. Um, some of the people, the, some of the scouts had those dome tents. Those tended to kind of roll away uh, in the high wind. So that, that was an experience I'll never forget. Um, but again, yeah, it's just, just being exposed to some of that outdoor stuff that you don't do every day was just a great experience. Yeah, and, and for the folks listening and, and watching this, the National Jamboree it happens every four years uh, at a big location, and over 50,000 uh, young men and women from all across the nation gather and, and, and have a lot of fun. So yep. the National Jamboree is a big deal. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit. I, you know, I was, when I first got here, I was looking at a capital campaign brochure from I don't know what year it was, but I said, I know that guy. That's Tom Kaufman, our, and you were our treasurer at the time. Yep. So... Uh, as a young person, you not only uh, were involved in your troop, but you were involved in some of the things that the, the uh, Hawk Mountain Council did. So tell us how that was, it, you know, talking with board members, learning from others, business leaders. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, just it was, an, it was kind of a, an interesting opportunity. I think they were the, the board campaign or the capital campaign had just gotten started. I think it was in about 84, 85. So at that time, when, you, when you're about 15 years old, you're kind of an older scout uh, in, the, in the way things go. So they were looking for... They were up at camp, trying to take some pictures for some of the, the capital cam, uh, campaign brochures and, and publicity and things like that. And our troop happened to be there that week. So uh, I was an Eagle Scout and at the time already, and they were just looking at, you know, wanted to take some pictures. So you, it was just interesting to get to interact with some of the board members that were up at that time, just so you could kind of share a little bit of your story about what scouting meant to you and how, again, some of those leadership opportunities. And again, not being a real outdoors kind of guy, but I went to Boy Scout camp every year until I was 18 years old. Um, it was just a week I looked forward to. Towards the end, I didn't accomplish as much as I did when I was younger. You just kind of went and enjoyed it and you spent some time on the lake doing boating or shooting. Uh, but it was just being there at the right time, I think is how I ended up being on the cover of the, of the Capital Cam okay. Campaign brochure. But uh, it was neat to kind of get involved and tell the story a little bit to some of those who were actually doing the ones trying to raise, raise the funds for the Capital Campaign. Yeah, and that's a great thing about our board of directors. We have 50 uh, business leaders in, in our community that, that really provide the uh, resources to make scouting happen. And they always go to camp and ask young people, what do you need? What do you want? And we're involved in a capital campaign right now trying to raise $3.5 million to, to really meet the needs of those young people. And it's kind of interesting that it's coming for, full circle. You were involved in that in the 80s. You're involved in that now from a different perspective. And, yep. Now I and, get to uh, give money as opposed to just helping to raise and it. We, and we appreciate that. <laughs> we appreciate that. So you're like me. You have uh, two girls at home, right? Yep, that's correct. Uh, two girls, uh, but you're still involved in scouting. So tell us, tell us why with two girls uh, you're still involved in in an uh, organization like the Boy Scouts of America? Yeah, I was uh, obviously typically when you, you cycle out as, as you become an adult, um, you obviously you, maybe you go to college, you get a job, you tend to not be as involved anymore. Uh, but I went to work at Rhinesland Company, which is now RKL, where I'm at now. And uh, a current board member, Tom Beaver, uh, said it was time for me to get back involved in scouting. I had known Tom through my father. And at the time, they were looking for someone to get involved in the Kakuzing District, which is a, kind of a smaller subset within the council that we have here. And so, um, you know, when, the, when your boss asks you to get involved in something, it's something you, you, you tend to agree to. But again, it, scouting meant so much to me as a youth. I really was kind of looking forward to getting back involved in it. And um, so I spent three years as the district chairman of the Kakuzing District. Got involved in the finance committee based on some of my backgrounds with uh, accounting and, and understanding numbers, et cetera. And 
because I think it means so much to me. I've just, you know, obviously didn't want to just be the person and maybe show up to some of the meetings or, you know, not really participate, but really got involved and engaged and really just tried to add whatever value I could because it did mean so much to me as a youth that even though I don't have boys, uh, probably won't be involved at a, a troop or pack level, uh, but it was an opportunity to stay involved and give back to something that really meant a lot to me as a youth. Well, never say never. As, as, I, uh, as we talk, I have two girls also, and we do have girls in our program starting yeah. at age 14 at this point through venturing and exploring. So perhaps uh, you and I will be, a, will be a leader and get to go to Philmont in a few years. So yep. never say never, Tom. So thanks so much for joining us as we uh, continue our, our journey preparing young kids for life, and we look forward to seeing you uh, in, in the next segment. Check in again next week for another edition on our Hawk Mountain Scout Council Prepared for Life series. For more information, visit our website, hmc-bsa.org, or call us at 610-926-3406. You can also find us on the People Chronicles YouTube channel.